I think it's important to get up to walk during a flight because um, like the other day I was on quite a long flight and I had a dead leg and it's awful it's the worst thing ever so that's always good and to do a little circular motion with your feet as well just to get the blood the blood flowing um, but movies more than anything else and iPods and beat headphones monster beats the noise reduction ones where you can't hear the engine or somebody snoring next to you or anything you've just got the music that's probably the essential for me on a flight yeah my favorite American dish is New York pizza only in New York though what do you he's nodding <laughs> what do you get on it um well I'm I'm very classic I like pepperoni and cheese and nothing else um so that's what I'd go for I reckon well the music that I'm listening to on my iPod right now is Beach House which is a do you know them? really great LA band um, and I have Tea and Dream and literally every song could be released as a single they're really terrific I think they're a great band um, War Paint is another great LA band they're they're an all-girl band um, Lady Gaga obviously um, who else Led Zeppelin and The Smiths I always listen to The Smiths one thing I can't live without is probably my iPod I mean I can live without it you know, let's not be dramatic here, guys. But um, but I do. I bring it with me everywhere. And it's just nice to escape every now and again. You know, to put on some music. It's like you've got a soundtrack to your life. Yeah. Do you uh, look back now and think, do you actually nearly have to pinch yourself that you were sitting there in the auditorium on that night? As you say, it's the Kodak Theatre where it actually uh, took place on Sunday night as well. Uh, no, um maybe because i was i was very young when i went i'm not yeah. sure um but you're surrounded by although they are very well respected and very amazing people in their field you're surrounded by filmmakers and when you work on a film set you're surrounded by filmmakers so it's your own type of people mm. and um maybe that's what makes it um less daunting yeah. i'm sure if i i really 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 want to go to the grammys because mm, be i think cool. that would be an amazing show to be at then i'd probably pinch myself because they're in a separate field to me yeah yeah so. among among the sort of pop stars yeah. and the rock including stars lady that, gaga. That, 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 including Who's lady awesome. gaga actually there's a couple of listeners who, who are in you know? yes, okay. that's true uh Saoirse, can you remember was there a uh, post uh, oscar bash that you went in 2007 that you can recall? um i went to the governor's ball i think everyone goes to that that's where you get fed after about five hours um so that was nice everyone was very glad um and i don't think i went to a party after that which is really <laughs> frustrating now that i'm really really um i'm really good at that i didn't do that there was a an amazing party that we missed out on and actually the day after the oscars um james mcavoy who who was in atonement he um he was at the airport and he told us, listen guys, you missed out on the most amazing after party. After we left, Prince and Stevie Wonder went back to Prince's house. They had a 12-piece band and anyone could come back and just listen to them jam till like 4 o'clock in the morning. And oh, we missed out on oh that Lord. and I could yeah. not believe it. Yeah, there's only one um, thing for us, you'll have to get back again. I know. Yeah, yeah. God, hearing that you missed a party like that. I know. <laughs> you were half asleep. I'll do better next time. Tell me again. Adapt or die. Think on your feet. Even when I'm sleeping. I'm ready. All you have to do is flip that switch. Come and find me. There you are. Mm. Where did you get the lessons, the, the Finnish accent? Of course, you had to start with me screaming my head <laughs> off at my <laughs> What is it, 9 o'clock in the morning? Um, where did I what? Where did you learn how to speak Finnish in English? Well, she's not actually Finnish. Um, we're not quite sure where she's Scandinavian. from. Scandinavian. She's Scandinavian type, German type, um, Czech. <laughs> <laughs> we're not quite she's sure. A she's a bit of a She's a bit of a mesh of everything. Um, but uh, but she grew up in, in the Finnish forest in isolation with her father, right. who Eric Bana plays. And um, yeah, and I had to learn martial arts for a couple of months beforehand and train in the gym to get, um, you know, muscles and things like that, Both which up, I, had, you know. I had never had before. <laughs> 
Um, so it was good fun and it was the first time that I had ever done anything very physically challenging like that. I and mean, how did had, you find it? Because as you say, it was a, a new departure for you, wasn't it? A it very was, physical yeah. Role. Well, I loved it. I yeah. did. I've always been a very active person and, um, and to incorporate physical activities into acting, into what I do, which is usually um, a lot more still and, and calm, was fantastic. Did you kill? Great. Did you have to kill people? In it? I did. Yes. What was that like? Uh, there's one or two. two. <laughs> Killing is wrong, but <laughs> in movies it makes great entertainment. Um, yeah. No, I killed about six people. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's an impressive. Yeah, but you can't freak. give away the end, so I presume. You starred in Arietti, which was an animation. What drew you back to this animation, Justin, in the Knights of Valor? Um, I think. The people that were involved with it were so exciting, like the cast are amazing and Antonio being involved um, is very exciting as well and I just really like the story, I like the idea of, um, of the underdog being the star in this film and the fact that he has red hair and he doesn't want to be a lawyer, he wants to be a knight. I found that all quite lovely and endearing and um, it's kind of your classic underdog story and I, I really like that about it. And also I got to use my own accent when I played Talia, so... I think it's about time you've used your own accent. I know, I don't think anybody knows that I'm actually Irish and I'm very Irish. Um, so yeah, so I'm glad I got to do that and because she's so feisty as well and she talks a lot, I thought, well, the Irish accent's perfect for that, so. Well, we've seen you feisty before in your film, Hannah. Did you draw any inspiration from that with Talia? Um, I pulled a few fight moves in the sound booth, for sure. Nobody's going to see that, hopefully. Um, but there was definitely a bit, of, a bit of Hannah movement going on in there. Was there any physical movement in the booth while you're doing it? Are you kind of like karate chopping at the same time? That's what I mean. There was a lot of that going on. There's a big fight sequence near the end. And I requested a wooden block that I could just chop at the whole time we recorded it. Um, as a young girl, I find a billboard of Ryan Gosling quite distracting. How was it being directed by him? I mean, he's very handsome. I don't really think of Ryan in that way. Because um, I, I was supposed to do a film with him a few years ago, like when I was about 12, and he was going to play my dad. <laughs> so I've always kind of had that mindset when it's came to Ryan. Um, I don't know, I don't think of him as my dad now, but at the same time, he's always just been, you know, Ryan. Um, so no, it wasn't too distracting, but he's got great fashion sense, and he knows how to wear a sweater. I'll give him that much. Before I go any further, I'm going to ask the unique, the generic question, which I'm sure you've had to answer, unfortunately, oh, a thousand times. For people that, uh, that want to know a little bit more about the movie, because can you give like a one-liner, or just a little bit about it, like the plot? What's the tagline? You know, love will lead you home, basically. <laughs> How I live now, love will lead you home. Um, the, uh, it's basically about two young people who fall in love and are separated by war and vow to get back to one another, to the place where it all started and where everything was perfect. That's a, I like that. That's yeah. very good. Um, that should be the tagline. Uh, Not the tagline ever. I've been asking this of everyone I interview recently. Uh, is Including there Brian Cranston? I, including I so. yeah, everyone, um, everyone. Uh, what do you, is is there anything that you collect? When I was a child, <laughs> I was an only child. I used to collect rocks, and I'll tell you why. Because rocks come in all different shapes and sizes, and there was another kid in the school that did it too, and it was a real bonding experience for the two of us. So we used to collect rocks. Um, Do you still have any? Nope, no, nope, I don't. I think I might have one, um, but I collected them for a while. And what do I collect now? Um, oh, you know, you know those um, grandma lemonade bottles that you get in the states. You know the ones that you get in Whole Foods. Yes. They're like these big bottles, and there's a grandmother on the front. And on the lid of those, if you turn it over, there'll be a little kind of. Um, piece of wisdom that this grandmother gives you so it's like dance like you know it's your last day I, on I earth and things like that and they always have little pieces of wisdom on it so I used to collect those and I have about maybe 15 of them at home okay so you clearly uh, you spend a lot of money on what you collect yeah yeah <laughs> and yeah. a lot of time too yeah, exactly um, with all of my friends <laughs> 
Kristen, it's a pleasure to see you again. It's nice to see you. Thank Breaking you. bad. Break <laughs> last few episodes. Well, I haven't seen last week's, so please. Oh, uh, it's good. It's a good one. It right. sets it up for the next one. Yeah, I'll let me hit yeah. stop. One of the journalists just brought up a story that I forgot about. Um, I think George was telling somebody about it. Our DP, Franz, who's very German. He's from Berlin and he's like, he loves everybody. And he was in there, obviously, when we did the scene. There was only a few people in there. And he came up to us afterwards. And we're like half naked, you know, and we're standing there like, yeah, it was, I think it was all right, wasn't it? And Franz comes up to us and he's like, oh, my God, you guys, that was so great. And then he says, you know, it was my first time, too. And for a second, I thought, were you there? Did you? <laughs> we're in the background and see you. you. With us or? <laughs> and then I realized it was his first time shooting, shooting one of those scenes. So it was really special for him as well. <laughs> Well, it was together. lovely. It was lovely for all of us. As much of the awkwardness is also after the fact, a and like talking about it, but also like friends and family sitting with you and seeing it. Is that a That's little bit? So awkward. Yeah, yeah, because my mum and dad came to see the film with me, right. so I didn't know how they were going to cut the sex in. Right. Um, and yeah, it was you know it was fine. I sat in a different row to them. I sat way way back, but <laughs> just screaming. <out. laughs> when the scene came up, like close your eyes now. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> Mam told me afterwards. I said, you know, did, did you did you watch the scene? She said, no. I just I just said to your dad, just look down, just look down. <laughs> I'll tell you when it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you when it's alright. You uh, shoot your father in this movie. I shoot my father. Yes. With a gun. Yeah. As you do. I, I passed I no did. judgment on your culture. I don't know what your culture is yeah. like. Again, yes. Irish, right. you know. Um, yeah, they needed a man one and a man two in How I Live Now. Um, that chase, myself and little Harley Bird, who's the kid in the film. Um, gorgeous little redhead. I don't know if you guys know. Do you know Peppa Pig? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cartoon. So she is Peppa Pig. <laughs> so she's a bit of a celebrity. Anyway. Um, That's a huge role, too, for it's, her. It's huge, yeah. <laughs> and she did such a good job with it as well. Um, but, yeah, these two guys are chasing us near the end of the film, and I get to shoot my dad. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what do you make of your experience in Hannah? Um, when I saw it back, it was, I mean, I was very proud of it, you know, it turned out very well. I always find it strange looking at films that I've been in, um, I don't really enjoy it that much. But I loved the experience of making it. And 20 and 30 years from now, people are going to talk about that film. Do you think so? For oh, sure. So. Those villains were unbelievable. You had the Tom Cruise run. Did I? You had the Tom Cruise run. Brilliant. And I wondered what you guys, I was like, did she watch Mission Impossible? Because <laughs> the run with the I hands are, how do you, how do you train did. someone, did you? No, but, <laughs> but it looks like I did. Yes, I did. Yeah. I thought you did. Well, there you go. Mission accomplished. How many 25-year-old women, nicely done, by the way, always uh, uh, excited when somebody comes on with a name that's harder to look at than mine um, on paper, and I know you're tired of it, but because you like <laughs> challenging people, I want you to help me understand and pronounce some words, okay? Okay. All right, so if we put one on the screen, like if I give you, show you this word right here, they're right behind you. It's, uh, it's easy, right? Yeah. Siobhan. It's Siobhan. Yeah. Right, right. Siobhan. Siobhan. <laughs> How about this one here? This one's easy. That's a Sean, I imagine. That's Kean. That's Kean. Yeah. That's Kean. <laughs> yeah. All right, next one. Do you want to go first? Uh, listen, I, to me, that looks like name, but it's probably John. It's, it's Neve. Neve. Yeah, because the M-H always makes a V sound, a V sound. Right, okay. You know, so, obviously. <laughs> Logically. Right, now, knee, if that, okay, that Rory. Yeah. Right? Well, we would pronounce it Rory. Rory. So a bit more of a U sound, but it, it is the Irish for Rory. Rory. Okay, cool. Rory, how, yeah. how about this one here? <laughs> so that's a V then. So that's, that's is yeah. that, is that Kiva? Close. Close. It's Quiva. Quiva. Yeah, very close. And what about this one here? Can you say that one? <laughs> I genuinely don't know how to pronounce your last name. Try it. Okay. Um, Strumbolopolis. Perfect. Yay! Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. And speaking of New York, you have a flawless American accent. How much work goes into that because you're clearly not American? <laughs> I wonder. Very how, Irish. <laughs> very Irish. Well, I was born in New York. So, so technically, technically I'm a New Yorker, but moved back when I was about three years old and never really kind of had the American accent. But I grew up watching things like Seinfeld and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, 
So yeah, so I think that just really opened up my ear to different sounds and just how people talk. And also, whenever my dad and I would just be messing around, we'd always do accents. That was kind of the automatic thing for us to do. So it was always a fun thing for me to do and I was kind of used to doing it. It seems very funny to think about you learning English from Seinfeld, that is very... It's talking like George Costanza all of a sudden, you know? It's like, wow, well, what a weird 10 year old. Very funny early <laughs> Who would you love to collaborate with on a lighter movie? Kristen Wiig, straight away. Oh, wow, she was just here the other day. I know she was. <laughs> I know she was. <laughs> and I'm gutted that I missed her. Um, she's my wallpaper on my phone. Oh, really? Her and the Californians, you know, the oh, SNL really? sketch, oh, yeah. Stuart. That's her. I mean, people like her and Will Ferrell and all those guys. The SNL guys are like, they're the best. They really are. And there's no way I'd ever be as funny as them. But I love comedy so much. And it's like, I'll watch that more than anything else. And Irish people have a dark streak in them, it seems. Oh, do you think so? Oh, maybe we do. It's all the fight in us, you say. But you see, at the same time, though, like the Irish have such a great sense of humour. You know, we really do. Martin McDonough is a great example. Yeah, McDonough, exactly, yeah. And his stuff is kind of dark and, you know, only a certain type of person gets that, I think. But in general, um, we like to have the crack, which is what we say at home. We like to have fun all the time. Um, so it'd be great to actually put that into work as well. Well, hopefully from this interview you'll start to get some lighter material. I hope so. I don't want people thinking that I'm really serious all the time, you know? You have, I think, one of the more difficult names to pronounce in uh, the business. What is the most common mispronunciation of your name? Sorcy seems to be a popular one. Sorcy, Suarez. <laughs> That's creative. Yeah. It used to really annoy me, actually. <laughs> it used to really annoy me having to do it. I was like, why can't they, you know, I don't get it. I don't get why they can't understand. But, um, but I don't mind now, because it is a tough name. And you look at it and you think, how the hell am I going to pronounce that? So. Bye, Hollywood Reporter. Do you mind me sitting like this? No, I'm happy Like I'm lounging there. on the couch. I'm happy for you to sit any way you want. I think actually people made a point, uh, uh, probably from a couple times ago, of, of some of you were sitting and how adorable it was. Oh, really? For comments on YouTube about your, the way you were sitting. I don't know if this is adorable enough or not. I don't know. You Say. just you just can't help yourself. I'm just gonna. <laughs> what do you What do you think now? It's a Vogue session. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep on capture this, baby. So you're well. <laughs> I am, but as we were just saying, are you working? I'm still jet lagged. <laughs> you're still jet lagged. I've been jet lagged since I last saw you. <laughs> It never stops. It never ends. What's the longest you're in any one place? Eight weeks? Um, I suppose. I mean, well, I have time off at the moment. So I haven't done anything shooting-wise since June. Wow. Um, which is when I finished the film in Detroit. Um, so, yeah, so I've had a few months off. I've kind of been in Ireland and Intentional London. or are you now unemployable? <laughs> Yeah, I'm never going to get a job again. I'm never going to get a job again. I'm worried about that. You're not I worried do. about I that. I am. I hope I do. But Good Lord. Um, it's very unpredictable, this movie business. This showbiz thing. Yeah. It, yeah. But uh, no, it's been nice. I mean, I had the summer off and was able to spend a bit of time at home and go to the beach and go to the west coast of Ireland and, you know, mm. it's been lovely. Just being a person. Just being a person. What about you? Did you tell you where I want to go? Portland. It's lovely. I really want to go to Portland, mainly My because of Portlandia. <laughs> That's drawn <laughs> you into the, it's the great. It, it's supposed to be horrible, and yet it's drawn you to its uh, yeah. weird charms. Yeah, because Fred and Carrie bring out the best in Portlandia. So <laughs> I'd love to see it now. Now, is that actually playing in Ireland, or is that something that you saw on IFC? In the no, era? it's on Netflix. Ah. And I... I'm a huge fan of Kristen Wiig and um, when I did that film in Detroit, mm -hmm. the video that we would watch was The Californians, um, you know that sketch <laughs> yes, that I, I do. on SNL and obviously Fred's in it and he's mm -hmm. amazing in it so I, thought, I wonder what else Fred's done and looked him up on Netflix. So did you develop a Californian accent? I do a Californian accent. Can you, do, can you move I your do. hair around appropriately? I my accent, which is like really just sort of like laid back. I just, <laughs> I just like to be relaxed and just like chill out, you know. But the Californian one though that they have in SNL, it's oh SNL, um, it's really, you know, 
kind of dragged out and yeah. everything's cowled for you. And <laughs> thanks for helping me put these sun-dried tomatoes and these clay balls, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all that sort of stuff. Stuart, what are you doing home from work so early? <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I you love take fresh. Shirt, and now you got me doing an Irish yeah. version of it. I, how did you know? Why are you home so early? I took Wilshire and I got on to Beverly, and then I took the ten. <laughs> so this could be your your uh, audition tape for SNL. Oh my God, that would be brilliant! I'd love to play someone with that accent. I'd love to. <laughs> it's just a matter so of time. Fun. I really would genuinely love to play a Valley Girl or or someone like that. You know. You've seen enough of them. You've met enough of them now. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> yes. You, we keep on thinking that Valley Girls are over in LA, but the truth is they're really not. They're alive and well. They're alive, alive and, and kicking. kicking. So. So is this? But yeah, I mean, what were you saying? I relate. What were you asking? I don't even remember asking. anymore. The air conditioning completely. It was all great anyway. <laughs> Everyone's great. <laughs> it was all great. It was all. I love good. the movie. Don't worry about it. It is actually. It's hard. To are those Louboutin flats? Yeah. I didn't know those existed. I thought that was like a. I nice. thought, yeah, I mean, a lot of those shoes, they've got the little pinpoint tails, and I can't walk in them. <laughs> I mean, I can't. Either can anybody else, they just really fake painful. it. Yeah. So they're quite nice. They're not mine. Oh. I have to give them back. Because <laughs> you nice. walked the red carpet in them? I or? don't. No, I didn't. I Did didn't. Uh, not last night. I wore heels. They were actually really comfy heels I wore last night. Um, I can't remember Payless. they were by. Payless, see? <laughs> TJ Maxx. <laughs> TJ Maxx. My man loves TJ Maxx. People adore TJ Maxx. I don't. It's great. Not my Designer thing. brands at high street prices. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna pull that out of this tape and put it on an ad somewhere. Yesterday's fashion like, today, but so what? <laughs> Who cares? Eighty something percent, eighty-eight percent or something is uh, cesarean, which is a shame. But what do you mean eighty-eight? Oh, eighty-eight. Very percent high percentage is now. See, I'd, I'd prefer to just give birth. Na like with drugs, but naturally. Right. Um, my mom had to have a C-section. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this. My mom had to have a C-section because I was breech. Huh. And there's a sonogram of me in my mother's womb. Huh. And I'm upside down, first of all. have to be right. difficult. And my hands are behind my head. <laughs> and I'm just, just relaxing. chilling out in her womb. <laughs> and she's screaming. <laughs> and she's screaming. I think she was, at, well, she was gassed up because she had a c-section so yeah and do people bother you when you're on the train or just say hi or is that um, not an irish thing to do no you i mean you know they don't bother me but in in ireland i get recognized more than anywhere else but everywhere else is fine any other city is fine sometimes i'll get a look so if somebody's <laughs> on the train and they'll and they'll kind of go <laughs> <That's it. laughs> so it's fine. I always find that it's weird with actors because we do this so much. I mean, I talk to so many people, and it's like there are people I've spoken to, and I just don't really expect them to remember me, or you know, it was one thing oh, amongst two hundred things. Did. Some people remember me, but you, you know, we, you and I have spent a lot of time together over the yeah. years. But most people, it's you know, it'll be one half an hour in. Yeah. You know, this huge day, weekend they were doing or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I just don't expect to anything from them. So they'll make eye contact or almost make eye contact, and they're kind of staring at me, and I'm kind of staring at them, and it's like, I don't oh, know mean, how to say. Do you mean if you bump into them? If you're like in a restaurant at the oh, same time, you're kind of yeah, looking over, and yeah. they're kind of looking at you, and you're like, I'm not a celebrity. I I'm know, not like, yeah. yeah. Who do they think do? I am? It's well, if weird. you ever see me in a restaurant, you know I'll come bother you, you can immediately. You'll come over and bother me. Well, I'll come over and hang out with your dad. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I've seen as much of him as I've seen you, of you. You just want me for my dad, don't I you? I just want you for your family. <laughs> well, you, so I mean, so much of me is my parents, you know. There's a lot of me that's obviously influenced by everything else, but so much of me comes from my parents, and you know, there's things that I'll do. I mean, I'm my mother already, and I'm not. it's not like I'm 40 and I've suddenly realised, oh, my God, I'm becoming my mother. I am my mother now. Hmm. Um, and you're okay with it? I'm completely okay with it. I love my mum. Um... And, and my dad, too, you know, so, uh, yeah, so it's nice. Okay, so before we go, we should uh, sell the movie one more time. Okay, <laughs> just go see how I live now. And can you do it in California knees? And, and what, and, and like a, what, just like a, a valley kind of accent? Sure. Um, so there's this movie that I did a while back, and it's called How I Live Now. And it's directed by this guy from Scotland called... Um, Kevin McDonald, and he's like super talented. He's like super smart, and he makes like super great movies. So this is also a super great movie, and you should go and see it. <laughs> That's how I sell my films now. 
<laughs> no, just go see it because it's about two people who fall in love and um, they're separated and they try and get back to one another and that's the most beautiful story you can tell. So. And the world is ending around them. The that's world not, is ending you know, around them. And it's not leave out that small on. detail. <laughs> yeah, also a bomb goes off. <laughs> There's that as well, but it's a little matter. Sersha, Sersha, yeah. are, are you ever going to make a bad movie? This is getting silly. Ah, thanks. Now, you thanks must be nice. um, the outdoors. Every film, you're surviving the outdoors. You must be an expert now. Listen, throw me out in the woods with... Uh, Ten-year-old to look after for a few weeks. When World War Three breaks out, you'll be fine. Now I can't believe this, but you're you're 19. So could you give um, a 19-year-old top tips for surviving the great outdoors? <laughs> a typical 19-year-old, or yeah, what do you need? An experienced lip gloss, like myself. pen knife. I'm not into lip gloss, even though I'm wearing it right now. I'm a bit uncomfortable with that. Um, I suppose you need a pen knife. I always like a cup of tea in the morning. So, cup of tea, you know, tea bags and a kettle, that's always very important. Um, some beans, you know. And a thick knit. A thick knit, a jumper, a brush, keeping up appearances, you know. I spoke to your director of this film and I said, I said what I liked about, certainly the first, well, I liked it all, but the first half was how comfortable the sweaters looked. And he actually said that you took one of them home with you. No, I didn't. The one that Did Edmund I... wears. The nice one that Edmund wears. That no, you kind he of... didn't give it to me. I wanted it though. He's he's telling you porcupines. They he? didn't. No, they didn't give me that. But I did get other clothes. Um, I wish I had gotten the jumper. I got my creepers and things like that. That was the most comfortable jumper I've ever worn though. Um, so I would really like it if I could. But we, yeah, we had great clothes in that. No, you're. Okay. And I just wanted to know if there's if there's anybody that you that you were initially like. Uh, okay, this I'm out of my depth, and then you get over it. But I don't think so. They've all been great. Almost everyone that I've worked with has been so fantastic to work with. I don't think there's been anyone that's made me feel that way. You know, they put so you I've, at ease. They're nice. I've been lucky in that way. However, if Kristen Wiig was in the room and I was supposed to do a scene with her, I think I'd just have a huge grin on my face the whole time because I think she's wonderful. So you love her, but you'd like. To It'd be wicked to be in a film with her as well. It would be amazing to be in a film with her, but I probably wouldn't do anything. Is that what you'd like to do? I just gaze comedy? at her. What? I think it's great. Um, but I remember I told one of my best friends, and she had always said to me if I ever worked with Robert Pattinson or Ryan, I need. she needed to come with me. And so I told her, I said, oh, guess what, I'm, I'm working with Ryan Gosling. And she grabbed my wrist like that really tight, and she's like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> that was her way of being really happy for me. So... She's you mentioned Daisy being slightly unlikable to begin with. She is very stroppy, but that must have been quite yeah. quite fun to play, I, I imagine. It was so great. It was really, really great. But I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to bring enough attitude to it and I wasn't going to be bitchy enough, um, even though I can be. But <laughs> um, but I remember that was one note that Kevin would always give me. He'd come over and he'd just say, yeah, just bitch it up a little bit, you know. I was like, okay, Kevin, thanks. Um, so talented and so lovely, but her true ambition uh, is to be a TV presenter. We is that really true? Show. All right. It's true. So if you want, which yeah. we rare, this is a rare opportunity. Okay. Do you want to read the cheesy introduction to yourself on camera one? I would love to. There it is. Like <laughs> I would love to. Go ahead. Okay. From atonement to the lovely bones to Hannah, Sir Sharonan, or Sarah is Ronan as most people call her, <laughs> is making all the right decisions in her career, and her latest film, How I Live Now, is no exception. You are such a young lady and already you have an Oscar nod and a Golden Globe nomination you under your belt. As a child star in Ireland, could you have ever imagined being the success this successful in Hollywood? Well, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that. Me, it's just, you know what, because we are lazy here and if you're self I know you just like get people to come in to their own interview. Go ahead, please. You interview yourself. You're welcome. We have had other prominent people fill in for me. Would you like to do that? I'd love to do that, but I don't, I don't know if I could do it quite as well as you. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I think you really could. That's I think you're a bit of a pro Well, you know to what? Me. She's a very good actress, is she? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Here's the thing. Your voice is so fabulous. Wait, what's happened? Jim is crawling underneath yeah. the oh desk. God. What Where happened? My mic broke. Oh. Are we well, still live? We're still live on TV. Oh, my God. Do you want me to carry on? Now I'll cuddle up to you and I'll read into your mic. No, relax. Nothing on tour. Thanks, Jim. Um... But in any event, we, uh, you've got the most fabulous voice. Do people ever want you to do the recordings on their phone and things? Um, 
No. <laughs> no I, <won't laughs> like they I wish they would. I, well, actually, the girl in How I Live Now who plays Piper, who's my cousin, and we kind of go on this um, journey together, and she is the voice of Peppa Pig, which I don't know if it's big over here, but it's a huge cartoon at home, and like all the kids watch it. And she's got this amazing voice, so every single person on set would get her to record little things to their <laughs> two-year-old nephews and things like that. She spent most of her time just doing that on the set. <laughs> Playing with your past goals, like Hannah and the way back, I think in this movie, I feel like you're the perfect person to have around if the apocalypse does come. So, have you picked up any skills? Give me some nunchucks right? and, and I'll keep you safe, is all I'm saying. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I think I'd be really handy to keep around. Keep people Keep entertained. Around. Sing them, sing them an Irish ballad when things get tough. <laughs> get a little sentimental. Get a little sentimental. Get and then you're like, oh, here we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get the potatoes out. Get the tea out. I can make the tea for everyone. <laughs> That's a savior for me. And last thing, you're obviously one of the most sought after young actresses in Hollywood right now, and your name's thrown around for so many big projects. And the last, latest one is Fantastic Four. Is that a real rumor or? Do I don't think so. Know? Well, I suppose it is a rumor, but... Um, <laughs> oh, is it a real rumor? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that is. But I think that's no just you. Um, no, I haven't auditioned for it or anything like that, you know? Um, so, no, so I don't know what's happening there. Um, it depends on the superhero film. I think there's a few that are very clever. There's a few that are very well written and they've got a good sense of humour about them, which I think is good. So something like that is always great, you know? But um, it would have to be the right one, I guess, yeah. Well, I think you'd be a great fit for any... Ah, oh, thanks. Congratulations. What did you like about working with Kevin? Oh, what did I like about working oh, with oh, him? Oh, I don't know what was surprising about working with you. Because I had met you a bit, so I knew yeah, what you I were like. Um, I mean, I loved... This is like some strange date show. Yeah, I know. What I, How did that what date I noticed go? first about Kevin <laughs> was his sensibility. <laughs> And his intelligence, his emotional intelligence, which is true, actually. <laughs> um, I uh, I mean, it's funny talking about someone when they're here, but he, he is um, one of my favourite people to work with, and I want to continue to work with him because I think uh, we're on the same wavelength pretty much all the time, um, or were when we were doing this film. Um, he uh, has had a lot of respect for me and I had an awful lot of respect for him and um, I think we just work very well together. I think when you're on the same page as a director and actor it's very important but to also really establish your relationships you know and I mean when, whenever I work on a film I'm doing it for the director. They're To me they're the boss and they're the person that I that I want to do good for um, and I just love Kevin as a person so. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm finding this really my mother, If only my mother had said such nice things about me. I know you're working with George Mackay in the film, who's just a delight, isn't he? He is. Have you talked to him? Not tonight? yet. Not this evening. I think I saw him down there. Um, yeah, he's the best. He's great. He's got great hair right now. Great hair. Oh, it's great. Uh, you guys are all amazing. And to Sergio and George, what were the most difficult scenes to film? Um, in general, or together, or... <laughs> I, I don't there know. One thing. <laughs> that was the easiest. <laughs> I, I don't know. There's the, the sort of the practical elements when we're all kind of in the kitchen, when we're all together. Um, just this, and a sense of coverage, and and what we kind of ended up doing is we'd shoot a wide shot first. And we'd do all the coverage and it ended up changing so much that then we'd sort of redo the wide shot. Um, and, and so, yeah, we'd kind of bookmark it and it, and it changed in the middle. So um, those were probably the most complex because there's so much going on and so much to cover. And everything, a lot of the earlier stuff as well was handheld. Um, so Franz would just be running around the kitchen trying to cover as much as he could. And he'd be on George one minute and then the next minute he's on the ghost unicorn. And, um, <laughs> and so that's what was so great about it, actually. This wasn't difficult, but it kind of kept you on your toes, I think. But what was so great about shooting the earlier part of the film is that um, each take was going to be different. So the energy was going to be different every single time you did something. Well, I think one of the trickiest things 
it's to do with the earlier half of the film um, might have been the river scene actually because as gorgeous as it looked it was actually freezing cold that day <laughs> and it took us forever to shoot so. and you went 20 times in yeah. the ice cold yeah. water we, yeah we jumped into the river about like 20 times or something to try and get that lovely dreamy shot so. <laughs> movie magic <laughs> I'd like to ask Sorja and George um, how you prepared if you read the novel and obviously for Daisy's character uh, it's very important for us to feel like we're in her head with the voiceover and all of that so how did you guys prepare for that? Um, I didn't actually read the book before I began shooting the film, yeah I know um, very unprofessional no, I, I... How did you cop that? I wouldn't say most people would have known about so much action, maybe they would have. Um, it was easy, you know. Like, um, the day before, he probably didn't let me do something and I thought, well, tomorrow. <laughs> the tables will turn. Um, it was one of those things that I, I think it kind of happened at the last minute. Um, Kevin knew how good an actor my dad was and he needed a man too. So, um, so they got into it. But my poor dad, he had a dodgy knee at the time. And so you don't see all the running that him and the other guy, Mark, do on the film. But they ran, like, for two days, pretty much. Um, and his knee was so terribly painful by the end of it. So he put up with an awful lot for me and Kevin and Harley and everyone. Question. Yes, Anthony. Uh, yes, the, 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 the incest question, yes. Um, I think everybody got that. Were you guys actually first cousins, blood related? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we were cousins. <laughs> but you know, maybe Charles should, I mean, <laughs> our cousins. I think we're cousins, but maybe you think we're different. Well, I think that. I think in the film they talk about, uh, they mention they are cousins and that's the nature of the kind of family feeling, but technically, as they say, they're not actually blood related, so that's, that's what it's <laughs> Everybody feel better about that now? <laughs>